Speak with us. Deep in our hearts. Thank you that we could sense your presence in worship. And that it can activate us unto obedience. Change the posture of our heart towards you. Now, Lord, give us instructions so that our ready hearts may be agile to obey. Cause us to be a congregation that can quickly move, quickly obey, quickly direct our course, delight in your ways. Bless us this morning, Lord, as we follow you. Amen. I'm so happy for Rudy's word because now I know that I heard correctly on what I need to preach on. You use the word, Rudy, spirit of slavery and fear. Well, we're going to go right there this morning. Thanks for that confirmation. I know it, it, uh, sometimes it takes faith to come out, but it's sometimes all the pastor needs, <laughs> the faith of one member. How to overcome the spirit of fear. Who's ready for this? Let's hit this thing. Let's, let's hit the bees. We can do it, and we're going to do it together. Um, I, I'm just reminded of what Pastor Andre said last week. He said there's been many times in his life when he's been overwhelmed, and the storm or the fear has always ceased when Jesus arrived and he spoke. As with the disciples when he came walking on the water, Psalm 34, verse 4, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. I mean, uh, to put this this in the negative, it would be, if I would love to keep most of my fears, what I need to do is not seek the Lord and not have him answer me in a way that I obey. Amen? I sought the Lord, he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. And I want to just climb into this by focusing on one passage this morning. Now, one passage can fit well with all the rest, but one passage often cannot hold everything on one topic. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Romans 8, verse 13 to 16, and try and get most out of this passage regarding the topic of fear. Are you with me this morning? Let's, let's read together. So, well, before we read, verse 15, if you, if you want to Google about fear, verse 15 will show up. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption, as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. What we need to understand is that verse 13 to 16 comes as a sandwich. It comes as a thought line, at least together. And you'll see from verse 13 to 16, hugging verse 15. And so you need to bite them together and chew. All right? To make sure you get the whole piece in. Okay? And so that's what we're going to do this morning. We also see in verse 13, starting with the word for, verse 14, starting with the word for, and not ni fir ni, ne, dar (laughs) om. Verse 15, starting with for, and then verse 16 wraps the passage up. And so what we get is we get a passage that is building an argument, all right? And so let's, 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 let's just read it before we dissect it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. That's a hard intro. That's a hard first verse. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of a body, you will live. That's not a mincing of words. <laughs> For all who are led by the Spirit of God, 
They are the sons of God. Right? This is not gender biased. Sons include all. Okay? It's not trying to be exclusive. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. Okay, so we get there. But you have received something else. You've received the spirit of adoption as sons by when we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, I want to start with verse 15 and then I'll, I'll, I'll work my way back. But let me just start because it's kind of a general thing I want to address first. You did not receive a spirit of slavery. Now, in 1 Timothy 1 verse 7, Paul writes the same thing to Timothy. He says, God gave us not a spirit of fear. So he says here a spirit of slavery that cause, causes you to fall back into fear. But in another place, he says, you did not receive a spirit of fear. So it's okay for you to say, you did not receive a spirit of slavery or a spirit of fear. He's kind of, let's not get caught up in, in vocabulary here. Okay? The thing you receive that leads you into slavery or fear you can refer to this morning as a spirit of slavery or a spirit of fear. Okay. You did not receive that thing. That's not the thing you receive. That's what he's saying. Now, the first thing I want to touch on this morning is you need to recognize that there is an opponent. You, you need to recognize there's something that you did not receive. But that something wants you to receive it. And so in one sense, you have to take it personal. A pattern of fear and anxiety is often less misty that you, than you think. It's often less, it was just, it's often quite personal. It's you being set up by the enemy to receive something which has not come from God to you to receive. Are you with me this morning? Now, I, I, I love giving examples. Sometimes they okay, I guess, but sometimes they're really bad. Um, we used to do this <clears throat> on the rugby field in Sakuna when I was still playing. When we were just practicing, okay, so a shadow run, some of the rugby men will know what the shadow run is. That is the... the day or the two days before your game, you set your game plan in motion, uh, the team runs together, you make sure that you do everything right, but often you're doing it, but there's no opponents. You're just running against an open field, but you, team, you tend to be casual about it, the ball falls every now and then because there's no opponent. And so what we picked up is our excellence in our shadow run went down because we are running against no one. Then we printed some papers that looks like the jerseys of our opposition team for the weekend. And the moment we asked some guys to run with those things, we didn't have jerseys like them, so we'd stick it on there, against us, something in us became vigilant on the field. We held our offside lines. We had a rule that they became very, very strict on high tackles and offside lines, so we said, always a meter behind the rock, sorry ladies, a meter behind the lo uh, rock and a meter under the neck. That's where we tackle. The moment we saw the jerseys in front of us, meter behind, meter low, because we became activated because we saw the enemy. We took it personally. Now in one sense, there's a vigilance that picks up in me if I know there's someone that wants to come this week, knock on the door of my home, and be a part of my family, which I don't want to come in. My vigilance is up. I'm ready. The one, <coughs> the one day, sometimes my wife is vigilant like that. Sometimes me, that's why we are a team. The one, <coughs> she just sent me news like, this kid is sick, and that kid's got ears, and this thing is happening. And for a moment, we both just felt fear and overwhelmed. And as I was driving home, I just felt in my heart, I was reminded about that scripture, God has not given us a spirit of fear. And I felt when my wife opened the door to welcome me, I must remind us that we should not welcome that spirit. 
Yes, the kid maybe has got this and that, kid's got that, but the spirit of fear, they have nothing to do with that. We're not going to allow that thing in. And so my wife opened the door, and she was a little bit distressed that morning. I came in, and for the moment I had faith, I said, you know what, love, we're going to deal with all these things, but God has not given us a spirit of fear. That thing, you see, I'm personalizing it, will not come in here and be a part of our family. We will tackle this without fear, with faith. And so I want to ask you, are you taking it personally enough? Put the t-shirt on. No, that thing is there. And be ready. Now, this doesn't give you any direction yet, but it serves to activate you to be ready for the battle. All right. Now, let's go a little bit more directional on what one can do by looking at the rest of the scripture. So we're going to start with verse 13. We're going to do 13, 14, 15, and 16. Yes. What are we doing this morning? We are exposing and overcoming the spirit of fear. That's what we are doing. That's what we are after. If you live according to the flesh, focused on 13, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Now you have to understand that this is gearing up towards verse 15, 444, verse 13 is a part of verse 15. So if you want to win the victory in verse 15, you have to start in 13. If you do not kill sin, it will kill you. The scripture is saying, it's very straight up. Uh, The scripture is saying, pull the trigger on sin because it has already pulled the trigger on you. That thing. All right, but now very interesting, if we look at verse 13, now you have to follow me here, because this might be just a new window for some of us to look through. Sometimes we are afraid because there's something we need or something we don't have, and it's normal, we are humans, all right. But now, there is a gospel out there that teaches you everything you want, everything in your, you desire, God should help you, serve you, obtain that God, that God is the thing you want. God is at your service to help you find your idol. All right, are you with me? Okay, I'm coming in, I'm coming in strong. Now the problem is, as long as I don't obtain what I think I need, I want, I am in fear. I am anxious. I don't have this. What will I do? All right. But now, if I look at verse 13, it says, But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And what verse 13 teaches us is sometimes the way to freedom of fear is not by physical protection, but by spiritual correction. Listen up. Sometimes the avenue to freedom is by being spiritually corrected. If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. I'm going to try and illustrate this. For example, follow me here. You've got a daughter, you're a mom. And a spirit of slavery comes into your heart and causes you to compare your daughter. I know everyone doesn't have daughters, but just try and go with me, all right? The spirit of slavery is coming to you, wants to make you a slave and lead you to fear. And here is the tactic. Why is your daughter not like that person's daughter? There's a start. That's the case. And now you start going to the internet, to Instagram, to figure out how can you help your daughter to be more like that daughter. Okay, now a little bit of anxiety is starting to pick up. Is she going to be able to do it? Will she fail? Will she fail me? Will, will, will she fail herself? And, and now you are, you're going down this road. And now this thing blows up in your face because it will not work because guess what? It is not your daughter. 
that's a, that's a different person. And it blows up in your face, and you are distressed. You are in fear. Will your daughter make it in life? Will she have friends? What will the people think about you? You see, this thing takes you captive. It runs. This is an onkreit. Now, one day, it's, you're, you're, a, you're a mom. You go to your awakened group, for example, and you share with your friend, and your friend by the Spirit comes and serves you with love and a packet of correction, your good friend. And she says, why are you trying to cause your daughter to be like that girl? What is wrong with you? You have got a beautiful girl. Let her be. And you, like a good Christian, accept the correction And after trane, snot, and heil, okay, you stand up and you say, Whew, why do I feel free? Because my daughter did not change, but I am free. Because here's the thing, sometimes freedom comes from spiritual correction. Not from you getting what you want. The heart often needs to be delivered of what it wants by accepting the correction of the Lord. Spirit of fear expelled. That is something that a line of, of, of Christianity do not accept. Correction and repentance. But therein lies, I don't know what the percentage is, but a lot of the deliverance we need from spiritual slavery. Are you with me this morning? I thought this is my hardest point to almost like land. But if you get this, then I'm positive about this morning. The question is, how can I be free when I did not get what I want? Or what I thought I wanted. How, how is it possible that freedom came in me not getting, not achieving? Because what I needed was correction in my innermost part. Ooh, man, why did I put that on myself? Why did I put that on my husband? Why did I put that on my wife? Why did I put that on my supervisor? Why did I put that on my staff? The problem was here, if by the Spirit... You can walk away from the desires of the body often. That's where your life lies. Go there first and go there hard. Freedom might be closer than what you think. Are we together? All right. How do I overcome the spirit of fear? Listen, I recognize my opponent, but then also I start to celebrate spiritual correction as a victory. Let's go back one slide. That's what the scripture says. It says, if by the spirit you put to, de to death the deeds of a body, you will live. We must stop thinking of correction and repentance as a curse. It is a sign of the presence of a spirit in your life. It loves you. You're becoming stronger. You're becoming resilient. He cannot find a way into your life, that opponent, because before the Lord, you are an open book. Continually being instructed, delivered. How are you doing? It's gone. You think it's getting easier from here. Let's go sit on verse 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. All who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God, led to be driven by the Spirit, to be led away from, to be guided. Very important, present, continuous. And so what verse 14 would indicate to us, what is needed for me here is not to be led by the Spirit once unto salvation, but to be led or to walk in the Spirit continually until He takes me home. Okay, So, so one way, this, this is almost like a, a point where one wants to say, uh, duh. 
one way to expel or leave no room for the spirit of slavery is to be so busy with the Holy Spirit in your life that there is no place. Uh, there is no space for, for distractions, for other stuff. I, I am constantly mindful being led of what is the Holy Spirit doing on my heart? What is he whispering? Is there any correction? Is there any motivation, any encouragement? Because I am I'm not led once to salvation, which surely, if you've called on the name of the Lord, it was by the Spirit. But now I'm also continually being filled and led by the Spirit. He is a sure force in my life. And, and, and then come die, I under things so a flick, and, and you're like, you can, because you get to know the sound of a voice of the Holy Spirit. And, and so maybe it's also worth saying, uh, sometimes we do have to investigate and find, but find what's going on in our hearts, but I don't think the way to overcome the spirit of fear is to become an expert on all the demonic activity that there can be in the world, because it's going to keep you busy for life, and you're not going to know the Holy Spirit that well. Get to know the spirit in order to excommunicate the spirit of slavery. Fall back into fear. That's where our focus should be. Be all about what God is doing in your life as a way to immigrate from fear. Grow continually by the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's a simple way to expel fear from your life. If you feel overwhelmed, if you feel stuck in anxiety, maybe pray this prayer. Say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do? How do you want to lead me? Help me. Those who are led by the Spirit of God. Verse 15 and 16. Right. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. This is not a unique verse in Galatians 4. Same, right, same author writes, he says, because you are sons, it's not on there, because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So this is not unique, it's important. Now, very important, what, 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 what Paul writes here, he is writing very strongly into popular culture when he says, by whom we cry, Abba, Father, because in the Roman Empire, it was quite a political move at certain times to adopt. All right? To adopt um, good looking men that could end up in leadership positions, charismatic men, gifted people, would be something that will boost your balance sheet. Are you with me? It would be almost like taking a worker on by legal adoption. And so you can actually yeah, build your balance sheet or become rich by using adoption as a tool. But, but here, Paul comes in, he says, but you receive a spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. And what he is contrasting the culture with, he says, there's a kind of adoption, there's people, there's someone that wants you on, in their life for what you can bring to them. But then there's a father that's calling you to his lap. And that's different. And that is the father we serve. There's a perfect love with our father. A perfect love where all he wants is you on his lap. And then some of you will maybe remember this or know where this is from. It's in another book. There's no fear. In love, but perfect love casts out the fear. 
What is that perfect love? It's when you get on the lap of a father and all there is is love. You are mine. You are mine. And Jesus knows this. Because before he went into the desert, the father said, you are my son. And that love made him so resilient. No matter what bribe the enemy offered him, he could not be moved from the father's lap. Getting onto the Father's lap is one of the best positions to expel the spirit of slavery. Allow the Spirit to lead you also onto the Father's lap. Those few verses packs a punch. Take it home and apply it in your life. Let's stand this morning. I actually want all the, if I know this, there will probably be more people coming to the second service, also in terms of facilitators. But if there's any facilitator, small group facilitator, just join me in the front because we, we want to make a moment. We, we want to help some people this morning obtain freedom from fear and anxiety. That is, that is on the agenda of my heart. We, we really want to help you. What if we show the way, excite you, but we're not here to take your hand? And so let's deal with this thing. Let's take it personally and become free. There's nothing as paralyzing as being as being a slave to this thing that wants to take the space of your head and your heart wants to enter every room with you tell you what you must think how you must be afraid that can really stop I just felt I need to say this Psalm 27 verse 10 says we're speaking about the father's lap and I know for, for some people that might be a foreign concept because maybe family for you has been a really rocky ride more than anything else maybe to put it lightly but there's a word for some people this morning Psalm 27 verse 10 says for my father and my mother have forsaken me but the Lord will take me in is so it just because maybe you've not tasted what a healthy family is like does not exclude you from a place on the Father's lap? In fact, it is your invitation. Amen? So Lord, we just invite you into this place. Soften our hearts. Open our hearts with a hunger for the Holy Spirit. We've got no respect for the spirit of slavery. None. There's no space in our hearts, in our lives for that thing. And help us to expel it from our lives this morning and help us to help one another in prayer and comfort, in welcoming each other. We worship you. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We have respect for you and for your work. Just where you are standing, just open your heart to the Lord. What is he saying to you this morning? If there's still an area of anxiety, an area of fear, locate it right now and make a commitment to deal with this thing, to take one step in the right direction right now. The time is now. It's that word, Vian. Bro, the time is now, not tomorrow. Some people are already moving. I'm going to count to three. And if you want to expel anxiety, you need to quickly move. One, two, three. Quickly move out. This is a moment that God creates for you to take a step. You have worshipped, you have heard. Now you must move. Quickly take a step. We're going to pray with you. But everyone, everyone here is prepared to pray for you, to care for you.
to help you. Especially if you are always afraid, if it's like a mess, you know, you're not sure exactly, but you're afraid of this thing, you're afraid of that thing, please come because there's deliverance for you. That thing can lift from you, but you're going to have to take it personally and say, I've had enough. No one else can do that for you. You will have to be brave. Is there anyone else? Just take a step. There's someone here you can trust that you can pray for. Thank you for being so brave. I'm just practicing some patience this morning. Because maybe you're still searching your heart and you want to receive prayer. I'm also being intentional because it is, it is sometimes, it's a public battle. Many of our anxieties has got to do with what people think, what people say. And so stepping out. Stepping out, it is a big thing, but it is a step in the right direction. To anyone else, take your first step. It will not be the last, but it will be the first. So what I want you to do, there's no spectators here this morning. If you are still here with someone you love, someone you know, won't you just sit down and share with him one thing that stood out for you this morning. Just, just one thing that means something to you. And, and if you want to, if you know that person, you could offer to, to pray a prayer over them. I'm just giving you five minutes and then we'll dismiss. Thank you, everyone.